This video is for the Handling Tools and Operations File Management. We're also going to discuss some variables in this video. Alright, so the The memory in a robot, there are several different types of memory in a robot. They don't actually have a hard drive like a PC would have, but they have multiple types of memory. So the first type of memory is ROM, which stands for read-only memory. This memory actually is uh, referred to as FROM, is memory that requires no battery backup. So it's flashed, it's stored in there, so even if you lose electricity, it will remember that information. All right, the FANUC robot has two types of ROM. The first type is called the boot ROM, and the boot ROM is used to store the diagnostics and startup routine, very similar to the boot ROM of a PC. They also have the flash ROM or F ROM which is where they store the base handling tool and operations software, the base application software and also optional software packages that you might purchase to go along with the main software. So this software Is, um, is stored in, in flash ROM so that if, if you lose battery you're still going to have your software. Okay. Along with that there's RAM. Uh, RAM stands for random access memory but it also means that it's not read only meaning that it's volatile memory it needs power to remember that information. So there's two types of RAM. There's what's called static RAM, which is transistor based, which will hold the memory for quite a while, or actually indefinitely, I guess, as long as it has power. All right. So there's batteries inside of the robot. There's actually a battery in the base of the robot, which stores the mastering information, and then there's a battery inside the controller which store, stores all the static RAM information. So some of the static RAM information that you're going to find inside of the robot controller is your teach pendant programs. So all the programs that we're going to create using the teach pendant, those are stored in this static RAM. So you need battery power. If the robot controller is turned off, you need battery power to keep those programs, otherwise they'll be lost. Also, uh, all your system variables, any kind of settings that you would uh, apply to the robot, your data registers, your position registers, any um, variables like your access limits that we've discussed before, all that kind of stuff is stored in the static RAM. And so as long as it has battery backup, so if, if electricity is applied, the controller is on, or the battery, as long as the battery is good, if the controller is turned off, you will keep all your programs. They also have DRAM or dynamic RAM. This is actually capacitor based, which means that it needs to be refreshed every so often. So there's special circuitry inside your computer that will refresh this uh, dynamic RAM. But the important thing to know about the, the dynamic RAM is the fact that it is actually where the programs and all the information is kind of stored while the robot is running and as it's executing the programs they're stored in this dynamic RAM. This is not backed up and this will be 
um, lost even just by simply shutting off the controller. So when you power off the controller, this dynamic RAM is effectively cleared and reloaded. So, if we want to um, upload or copy files onto or, or take files off of the robot, make copies of the files, there are several different ways we can do that. The first way is through uh, memory cards, such as like a, a SanDisk or an older compact flash type of card. Now, the, the older robots... The R30IA robots and older than that, they actually use this card kind of shown down here in the corner, the uh, PCMCIA card. This is a card that was used back in the 90s a lot for laptops, for various things. And so the older style, the R30IA robots, they use this type of card. And what you would do is actually put a compact flash card will fit into a, a PCMCIA and then you would plug this PCI, PCMCIA card into the robot controller. This goes in the, into the controller and then you can copy files between this removable flash and the actual robot. On the newer robots, the newer robots actually you have a USB port on the controller, so you could put in a standard USB floppy drive, uh, or excuse me, USB flash drive in there. So if any controllers will, um, you know, so we can interface with the memory card that I showed on the previous slide. If you have a R30IA or older, you'll need one of those cards. If you have a R30IB or newer, um, it's going to be a USB. You just simply need a USB. Okay. Uh, some of the older uh, controllers can also, you might actually be able to um, connect up something like a floppy disk drive. You could also connect up a serial printer using a, the RS-232 serial type connection. They have the, the built-in flash ROM storage that we already discussed. They have the memory device. Now, the memory device, you'll see that in there when you start looking at files. The memory device is basically like that dynamic RAM where everything is stored while it's being used. So we can't, like, put anything directly into the memory device. It's kind of a... Um, it's, it's controlled by the software. So the, uh, uh, if we have a USB drive on our controller, so if it's an R30IB, it, the device that will show up is UD1. So UD1 is the USB port on the controller, if it's an R30IB controller. If, if you, on either, we, even on the R30IAs, on the Teach Pendant, the Teach Pendant has a USB port. And so that USB port shows up as UT1. Alright, so if we want to manipulate files uh, and store them, uh, copy them to a, a flash, an external flash device, the memory card, or the um, external USB, we need to go to the file menu. And so we can, we can back up or transfer just a single file, or we can back up all the files. So the way we would do that is we would select menu. So we would select the menu, go to file, um, F5, once we get to file, we could press F5, which is labeled as utility, and we could select our device. So the device choices we're 
going to have there, you're going to kind of see them. You'll see like the MC would be the memory card. MD is the memory device. That's kind of where you would be at by default. Um, F ROM would be or the, the flash storage and uh, RAM disk or UD1 or UT1. So these are the devices that you would select that you want to transfer the file to. So and, and then your file options are either like load or save, meaning that you can load it from that external memory device into um, into the MD, your, your memory device, which is kind of your running storage location, or you can save it to that remote device, that UD1 or that UT1 or the memory card. If you wanted to, the controller also has um, some serial ports that we can uh, connect up for communications, either an RS-422 serial port or an RS-232 serial port. And, all right, so the file types. So when we, when we go in and we look at files, there's lots of different file types. The most, probably the most types of most files on there are going to be of type .tp. .tp indicates it's a teach pendant program. Now this is a binary file that stores the information, all the information about the actual uh, teach pendant program that you created. We can sort by, when we go to menu file we can sort by the various different file types all right some other file types there's a cf which is uh, ascii a lot of times a lot of these different files um almost all the files are actually a binary nature which means that we you couldn't really just read them directly but there's usually a ascii um there's also an ASCII copy of it, which is a text readable file. So for the teach pendant files, those are .ls, or whatever the name of it is. Like if the name was Move Home, as shown here, the, this movehome.tp was a program that was created. And so what you'll see is you'll see, so see a move underscore home.ls, which is a text version of the file. So this text version of the file, we can actually download this text version and then we can upload it into a Word document, uh, which is something that you'll have to do for your final project. You'll have to submit your program code. And so you would want to grab this LS file and that would be a text version of your program that you could then upload into your Word document and make part of your final report. Alright, so some other types, there's a .io files which are for your I.O. configuration. We'll talk about um, the I.O. configuration in the I.O. chapter. Uh, there's macro files there's SV, SB, SV for variable, system variable. So SV stands for system variables. So there's several different files there for your system variables. These system variable files are hold your different uh, variables for the for the robot. And again, these these are all stored in the um, uh, static RAM location. So when we run a, a you know, so if, if we lose power and the batteries are dead, or then we would lose those. So one thing I, I meant to mention when I was talking about power, when you replace the batteries, and you should replace your batteries every so often, the batteries in the base of the robot are like standard C style uh, alkaline batteries that you can buy at Walmart 
Um, and those batteries must be replaced at least once a year. So you, sh you should replace those once a year. And then there's a lithium ion battery, which is a battery inside of the controller. It should be re replaced about every three years. So again, if you don't replace those, you're going to lose your programs, or you're going to lose all your system variable files there that are stored in that static RAM. So you need to make sure that you replace your batteries. You need a, um, a calendar. You need to monitor and make sure that you replace your batteries in a timely fashion. So, when you, um, if you're going to use, use a USB drive, okay, it should really be a relatively small drive, like 2 gigabyte or less, formatted using uh, the FAT file system. The, uh, uh, on the older robots, on the newer ones, you can um, do FAT32, but you can't do like some of the other formats that are available, like NTFS. So, if if you're not sure, you should make sure that there's nothing on your drive and stick it in the robot and let format it over in the robot. Okay. All right, so we can back up the files. Um, we, like, as I said, we can copy the files. So like those system variable files, our teach pendant program files, our IO configuration files, um, and also our mastering. Okay, so all our mastering data is also stored in that static RAM inside of files and our access limits and, and other information that's all stored in this static RAM. So we need to back that up. Now we can dump, we, we can do like a backup of all of these files onto our USB drive, uh, which is plugged into our teach pendant. And we can just like copy those all over and store them. I th usually then transfer them over to a PC um, or store them on the network server somewhere where they're backed up that we're not going to lose those. But you can back all those files up, just the individual files. Okay. It's pretty easy to do. You, um, you and some slides here. We go to file. So we go to menu, select file, which is usually number seven, but sometimes the numbers change. And then we select the utility over here, F5, to pick what device we're going to back it up to. Right. And then we can select um, F4, which would be for backup. So we choose F4 for backup. After we've set our device that we're going to back up to, we choose F4 and we can do a file save as. So we can select, we can save just the system files, which are like the variables and the mastering information. We can back up the teach pendant programs. We can back up just diagnostic or we can just do seven, all of the above. And that will back up all of those files stored in the static RAM. So if the file already exists on the uh, media we're copying it to, then we may get a question, you know, do you, know, do you want to uh, overwrite those files? All right, so these slides are just kind of showing the same things here. It's, um, right. So the diagnostic files, if you wanted those, they, they actually have a, a DG extension. All right, so if you want to get the directory listing there, um, let me flip back. We can kind of see it on one of these. Uh, if you press F2, that'll give you the directory listing of the device that you've currently are have selected and are looking at. And you can see like F3 is the load 
that would be loading it up from whatever device so you just did a set device with F5 and then you could load and you could load one file at a time if you wanted to load one file now it, the F4 says backup here if you press the function key it you'll get a choice for restore during um, if you're in control mode controlled start mode So the one thing, this particular menu is not showing you here because this was uh, just in standard cold start mode. But if you do a controlled start, you can actually back up and perform a what is called an image backup. And so the image backup, what the image backup is going to do is it's going to back up all of your flash ROM. So all of your software all of the uh, additional software options that you've added uh, any you know if you've upgraded the software all that information is going to be stored in the flash ROM and then as we said before your teach pendant files your diagnostic files your system variables those are all stored in that static RAM if you perform an image backup it backs up both that flash ROM and that static RAM with all your teach minute programs and settings and all that fun stuff. So you really need to do an image backup periodically of your robot because like if your motherboard um, on the controller was to go, your main board on your controller was to go, something like that, you could then restore from this flash drive and you would have all your software all the software options and everything would already be there number one and then your teach pendant programs and all your settings everything it, you would be able to restore the robot right back to the exact state it was when you made that image backup so you you would select here under backup you could select um, like I say, it's not showing in this slide, but normally there's a uh, image backup. And then what you can select that. If it's not showing there, you need to do a controlled start. So remember to do a controlled start. You have to um, you know, power off the robot and turn the robot back on. And while you're turning the robot back on, you got to select previous and next and hold the previous and next buttons both as it's booting up and it'll boot up and allow you to go into a controlled start and then you could select the image backup depending on the version of the robot some of them will, they'll give you the option right here but then you'll still have to shut down the robot and reboot and then it'll go through a image uh, backup or and so you can do that backup. If you wanted to restore that image backup, then you have to, again, boot into a controlled start and go to the backup restore option, which will be with, with the function key, FCTN with the function key. And then you would, um, like you'd be looking at it here and it would say backup. But if you pressed um, F4, this word backup would then change to restore and it would give you the option to restore your image file that you have. Right. Right. Um, when you're doing a um, image backup you must back it up to the device in the controller so you can't use like the USB plugged into the teach pendant uh, you have to have like the memory card plugged into the controller to do an image backup and or to restore that image backup alright so I kinda talked about printing the, the files if you had a printer connected up you could select print but most of the time you don't actually have one on your robot so you can just transfer those LS files to a computer and then you could print those and you can actually every uh, 
every robot actually has like a built-in web server so you can actually view all these files like the ls files and the teach pendant files you can actually view these through a web browser from your pc if the computer's plugged into the network that you can reach and so you can actually view these files directly from uh, a web browser you can well you can view the ls files or the ASCII version of the system variable files from the uh, from a web browser on the PC. All right, so now we're going to discuss variables. Now the book doesn't get too much into variables, but there's a few variables that I find that are are very useful to know. So I want to make sure that we at least discuss those here. So to see system variables, we select menu and then next to get to the second screen and then number six usually it's system and then type F1 um, after we select system we'll have to press the F1 key which is labeled type and then we can select the variable screen and then we can go in here and we can see all these variables So some of the variables that you might be interested in, this one here is dead man automatic reset. Okay, so when you first get your robot, usually this is set to a zero. And what that means is every time you press the dead man, you have that, well, every time you release the dead man, you get that fault dead man released. And so when you press it again, you still have that fault. And so then you have to press the reset button to get rid of that fault before you can actually jog the robot. But if you come into this variable, set this variable to a 1, then it'll automatically, as soon as you press in the dead man, it'll reset that fault for you. And then you can jog the robot without having to press the reset button again. So that's... Uh, it's kind of a nice variable to know. This will take effect immediately, so there's no restart required when you make that change. Okay. All right, so there's a, for mastering the robot. Now, what the mastering of the robot means is that you sync up your optical encoders with the location of the robot. So the uh, the robot, when you first comes from the factory, the robot is going to be mastered for you. However, these mastering values are, again, stored in that static RAM location. So if you lose your battery, then your mastering information is going to be lost. Okay. So normally you don't access these variables through the, this information through the uh, this DMR underscore group variable, you can actually access it through the master calibration screen, all right, which is under the system settings, uh, kind of where the variables were. And uh, one of the variables underneath there would be mastering done, which is going to be set by the robot automatically once you go through the mastering screen and perform mastering and again this this would normally be done as it comes from the factory but it you have to remaster the robot if you have to do maintenance on it so like if the servo went or the encoder of the servo needed replaced or a belt needed replaced on the robot that's going to change the values be it that and so the the values from your encoder are no longer going to match what's inside of the uh, robot static RAM location for the mastering information inside of these variables, and so you have to perform remastering. And so it, it you know when you first boot up the computer, it's going to kind of complain and say, hey, you know these variables stored here in DMR underscore group don't match the count variables, which I have we'll get to in the later screen here. They don't match. And so when you first every time you start up the controller, it it compares to the values stored in the base of the robot 
and the values that it's reading right now and it says hey if something has changed I'm not happy and you're gonna to have to do this remaster all right so those ver those values are stored the in the master count value so the master count value is storing the encoder values from all your servos from when you last did the master okay and then it also stores a reference count which is the count of the encoders right now and so when you shut down the robot it's remembering what those encoder values are okay and it actually stores that in a couple of different places here and if these disagree if these values here disagree when it boots up then it's going to start that complaining and say remaster me okay. all right so you can see there's a serial pulse coder count so there's this is the coder count um, on the encoders now which is is transferred into this variable and then compared to the reference count okay so these are all uh, values so these values are stored in multiple places and if they disagree you're remastering All right so to um, access the master calibration screen I already said you go to menu then you go to the next screen you go to system select type and you're going to be looking for master calibration but it may not be there if it's not there what you have to do is go into variables so you select type go to variables and find under variables this variable called master enable and you set this to a one if you set this to a one then when you go to the system screen and you press F1 type then you will see under there the choice for master slash calibration All right. so um, and then after you remaster usually it will automatically set this back to zero so mastering and calibration won't be visible under the system menu anymore now, this does take effect immediately so it doesn't require a reboot to do that but if you need to master the robot and you go to the system menu under and and then select F1 type and you're looking for master calibration and it's not there you got to go to your system variables and set this variable to a one and then it'll be visible okay. another error well, a lot of times what happens like if your battery goes dead or something was forced moved because you repaired something you, and your um, your your encoder values aren't matching those reference values and those variables I showed before then you you get a error message so you, you get this error message about the pulse coder there's several different ones that might appear but it's a, you get a pulse encoder error as serial usually it's like serial pulse encoder error or, um, says something about the pulse encoder and if you get that error you can't jog the robot to master it so you have to reset this error so you can jog the robot get it back to its zero positions and then go to the mastering screen and say okay it's time to master it but to, to actually jog the robot you have to come in here under the motor control and go to SPC underscore reset and set this to true so you press F4 which is labeled true and it will force this to true which will reset the pulse encoder error now once you when you press F4 it'll turn that to true and then actually in a few seconds it'll go back to false but at this point it should allow you then to jog the robot and get the robot back to the zero position so you can go into the mastering menu and actually master it All right, so these are just kind of listing a few variables here the MCR group okay 
There's a, a jog, F jog enable option underneath the master um, group here that will allow you to, uh, if you set this to a one, when you're jogging the robot, it'll actually accelerate and decelerate a little bit faster. All right, so these variables on the parameter group, um, when you modify these, you do need to perform a restart of the controller. You can just boot into the cold start, but you do have to do a cold start to change those. So some of the things that we can do here under this parameter group is we can change various uh, speed limit values. So we can uh, put like a maximum limit for speed. Okay. We can also um, set the password. Uh, the password is just the password variable. Uh, that you can change. That when you change that, takes effect immediately. You don't need a restart. Okay. If you're setting up your RS-232, this is where you would go to do that. Okay. SCR stands for System Configuration Structure. Okay, this is, if you make changes within here, you're going to have to perform a controlled start to make these changes. All right, and again, um, this is where we can do a lot of, like, uh, override the jog limits, speeds, so that you can uh, reduce the speed. Now, remember, you can never go beyond... 250 millimeters per second is the max jog speed that is is allowed so that's hard set in the robot that it can't go, cannot go faster than that but you can you can uh, slow those limits down from 100 percent which would be 250 down to 50 percent or something like that There's a timer um, settings, so there's actually some timers that you can uh, you might want to use in your programs, and so you would have might have to come into the timer variable, and there's actually several of these. The, the square bracket notation here would indicate that there's multiple ones, and so um, you can go in there and set the timer settings. There's also DCS. If you remember during safety, we mentioned DCS. DCF stands for dual check safety. All right. And so there's a lot of parameters here which are part of the DCS system if your robot has it. Now, not all robots may have it, but you can come in here and um, you, you can set the system parameter to one. Um, and this will allow you to disable. Uh, most of the DCS settings here, so you can uh, either set it to a 1 or a 0 there to enable or disable the, the DCS. All right. So um, if a DCS is giving you problems in the classroom, then we might have to uh, reset um, or just disable the DCS uh, for your project, something along those lines. But usually we don't have to mess with that. All right, so but anyhow, we discussed um, the different memory types, and we talked about uh, just backing up or loading files, and then talked some about the uh, complete image backup, and then uh, how to, to view files or view variables, okay, and, and just some of the common variables that you may want to adjust uh, on your robot.